Hello everyone, this is Shannon from That So Po, and today I'm doing week 47 of my 2021 reads. This week I finished a bunch of stuff that I've been working on for a while, which was really nice, and I did DNF one thing that just wasn't working for me. Timestamps and content warnings are in the description box below. First, I finished Mother of Invention, edited by Rivka Raphael and Tansy Rayner Roberts. This is a sci-fi short story collection that is focused on AI stories where the inventors are women or non-binary people, um, and there's just a lot of kind of intersection of AI sci-fi stories with gender and sexuality in this collection. Uh, it's just a very neat premise. I buddy read this with Rachel at Kalinati, who I will link below. I always love buddy reading with Rachel, and short story collections are just such a fun thing to buddy read, especially because we get to discuss each of them and the theme and since both of us are into AI and really interested in stories that do something different, we had a ton of great discussions in this. Um, a lot of the authors in this collection too are from Australia, New Zealand, things like that, which is always nice to get some stories from the other part of the globe. Um, and some of these were really fascinating. I particularly loved one by John Chu that I thought really questioned, you know, what are we doing? Um, had a lot of good ethics questions. But many of these stories kind of fell short. Um, I think that even though I really liked the premise of this collection, not all of the stories did exactly what I was hoping that they would do. The discussions weren't as deep in some of them and, you know, just a lot of them didn't end up working for me. Always when you're doing an anthology uh, with lots of different authors, some will work for you and some won't, but this one just had a few uh, fewer stories that worked for me than I was hoping for. Overall, I gave it three and a half out of five stars, but I am very glad that I buddy read this and got to have all those discussions with Rachel. Another short story anthology that I finished this week was Silk and Steel, edited by Janine A. Southard. I read this as part of the Shorts and Sorcery book club that Rea at the Bookfinch, who I will link below, is running. So there were quite a few of us on Goodreads checking in as we read each of these stories. Uh, and this was another collection that had some stories that were a lot of fun and some stories that were just okay. Um, the premise of this collection is that you have stories Stories featuring two women, one who is a swordswoman and the other who is, you know, kind of a princess type, and just that dynamic as they go through. I liked especially that some of the stories in this were just really lighthearted and whimsical and fun. There were a couple that had that sort of surreal, absurdist humor that I liked, um, but you know, there were a lot of other ones that just didn't work for me. Some of them because uh, humor is such a personal taste thing, and so some of the funny ones weren't funny for me, um, and some of the dynamics also didn't work for me. I think that anytime you have an element of romance, I get really picky if I don't like the dynamic. So uh, some of these stories were a lot of fun, some of them meh, not so much my taste, but overall it was an enjoyable collection and I really enjoyed hearing everybody else's thoughts on these stories. So I gave it three and a half out of five stars. Next, I finished Women in Art by Rachel Ignatowski. I read this out loud to my husband, Sush, um, and we have actually read a bunch of Rachel Ignatowski's works out loud. We have another one that is coming up next after this, and this was just as great as all of the other ones that we've read. So this is basically 50 mini bios of different women throughout history who have been great artists and contributed and maybe have been unsung because of their gender. Rachel Lignotovsky does such a great job writing these bios. She does such a great job picking different women in different disciplines in art around the world. And her art style itself is just fantastic. And the graphic design that she uses in order to set out these pages where she's got the biography, but then she has lots of little infographics almost, um, little drawings and bits of information about that woman's life. And just her style is so unique. Unique. So every time we read one of these together, it's so much fun. We love sharing these. Highly, highly recommend, especially if you have anybody who's a younger reader in your life. I think that this could work very, very nicely uh, for middle grade readers. 
but I just love it as an adult. It's such a great collection. And I learned about so many different artists. Lots of architects were included in this too, which I thought was really cool. Uh, I will read anything that Rachel Ignatowski puts out. I gave this five out of five stars and I love it and highly recommend it. Then I read Tempest by Beverly Jenkins, which is the third book in her Old West series. So I was glad to finish this kind of trilogy. Um, this takes place in Wyoming territory and we follow Reagan, whose family is in Arizona and she is a little bit of a wild child and she decides to go to Wyoming in order to be a mail order bride. And this is in the kind of late-ish 1800s, mid to late 1800s. Um, and she's a little bit impulsive um, but very strong-minded and very talented and she goes to be the mail order bride to a doctor whose previous wife had passed away and he has a young daughter that he needs some help raising um, so I think that anytime Beverly Jenkins writes a historical romance the history is on point the history in this was fantastic. I absolutely loved the discussion of um, kind of especially things like women's groups and the community fundraising and voting for different things that happen in this little town. Um, the kind of dynamic between the town doctor and all of the different people. Obviously race comes into this. Um, the main characters are black and some of the other people in town are black but a lot of them are also white um, and it also brings in quite a bit about the Chinese railway workers as well and some of the events that happened around that so I just love the history and that that feeling of being in a historical setting is always so so strong I also liked a lot of the kind of uh, dynamic the relationship between Reagan and her stepdaughter lots of that is great however this happens kind of frequently with Beverly Jenkins for me love the history the romance though is kind of meh um, I often don't like the heroes of Beverly Jenkins romances and I keep thinking you know maybe this this heroine like her story could be just really great if the hero weren't involved at all and uh, I definitely felt that one here although the hero did grow on me um, um, in the latter half of the story he got better but you know not my favorite in terms of romance but in terms of historical fiction I thought it was really really cool and Reagan is a little bit of a Mary Sue like she's kind of good at everything um, but at the same time it's nice to have that right it's nice to have a Western historical with a black woman who's just rich and talented and really badass so yeah so anyway I overall enjoyed this I gave it four out of five stars and if you're looking for historical romances that tackle a lot of interesting history and politics and race issues and all sorts of things I definitely recommend picking up a Beverly Jenkins and then I did DNF one book this week, which was An Age of License by Lucy Nisley. I've heard a couple people mention Lucy Nisley's works, and in general, I really like graphic nonfiction where you have somebody kind of telling memoir things or experiences all illustrated. I just like illustrations. So I was looking forward to picking this up, and it was okay. Um, but I ended up DNFing it at 64% mainly because I just didn't super care to finish it. Um, it wasn't that anything in this was bad, it was just that nothing was really intriguing me enough to want to pick it up. I kept forgetting that I had this checked out um, from the library and then realizing, oh right, I should read that. And then I'd pick it up, read a little bit and be like, eh, and put it down. Um, this is basically, the story of a trip that Lucy Nisley took, a couple week trip or maybe a month long trip to Europe. So it's talking about her kind of prepping for this trip and then it's a travelogue. It's her talking about going to these different places and hanging out with friends and family and seeing stuff. And it's kind of just like listening to a friend tell you about their trip, which I think could be a really enjoyable read for a lot of people. Uh, but I was just, I was really bored. I was really bored. And Lucy Nisley totally acknowledges uh, her privilege in being able to take this kind of trip but at the same time I mean it's a story of somebody with privilege visiting friends with privilege and it was okay um, I just didn't feel like there were necessarily any deeper themes maybe the only kind of deeper thing in here is just her dealing with 
her own anxieties, but that's not always my favorite thing to read about. So yeah, this was just not something that drew me in. And I think maybe I'm not gonna bother with any other of Nisley's works unless anybody knows of one of her books that you think, oh no, this one tackles really interesting issues or something like that. I did think that the artwork was quite nice and I really liked the lettering, like I quite liked the lettering, uh, but it just, it wasn't for me. Okay, so that is everything that I read and DNF'd this week. If you guys have read any of these or if you have any thoughts, uh, I'd love to hear from you. Just leave me a comment down below.